Okay. The little Just black one. Pull black one, right? Pull it down. There we go. Okay. First of all, what is Me Mega Me Mexico? It's a term that, that we coined uh, when we published our first book on uh, biodiversity of Mexico back in 1992. And it essentially takes a look at natural boundaries, distribution of plants, for the, uh, putting up boundaries for what is Mexico. And if we take a look here, we have the political Mexico, and we have uh, the mega Mexico. Essentially, if we take a look at, at Mexico, is, which is one of the, either the number three or number five in terms of being mega diverse, we find here that Mexico, I have a point here, I guess let's talk like this. Uh, Mexico has about 10% uh, endemic genera, and about half of the species are endemic. We took a look at Mega Mexico, ex extending the natural distribution of plants. We find that we have 17% endemic genera, and almost three quarters of the species are endemic to Mexico. So uh, this is a, a sort of new model that we're working on in terms of evaluation. Uh, if we take a look at the nomenclature, in particular for evaluating the botanical literature, it's important <coughs> because the taxonomy has been very confusing. Not as many species as Smilex, but it is a, is a plant that has been uh, just around in terms of the nomenclature. And here we have, uh, from Linnaeus up into our group's work, a nomenclature. We can see not only do the species change in terms of their synonymy and so forth, but just use the lines here so you can get an idea how it changes over time with the taxonomist, but also jumps uh, around in terms of their infragenic uh, uh, classification. The, inter uh, the sections were essentially established by uh, Bernhardt back in 1833 uh, as part of his pharmacological work of Datura, and, and essentially into three uh, uh, sections, Datura, Serata Caldas, Idutra. And over time, what we found, and this is the color code I'll be using throughout the talk, um, it, what, what we found is that uh, essentially, uh, Dutra needs to be split. Some of our um, uh, morphological work, uh, uh, taking a look in particular key at, at reproductive characters, about 50 characters in total, uh, essentially we find uh, that we come up uh, with this, this relationship here. Uh, normally, this group and this group here were included in the uh, original Dutra complex, but we can see it's split into two, and, and quite markedly so. In terms of ethnotaxonomy, uh, we see that the large floor ones are essentially uh, Tolvache manso, Tolvache grande, uh, and the smaller flower ones are Tolvache bruta or chica. So we can see there's a sort of parallel in terms of ethnoclassification. Uh, taking a look at some of the seed characters, uh, we find uh, uh, we're using about 42 different kinds of characters uh, as well as anatomical features. <coughs> Uh, that we can actually uh, look very uh, closely at the seeds and be able to differentiate them. In, in particular, we use 32 characters for an analysis here of the seeds, and essentially what we come out here with are three sections back to the old uh, Bernhardt classification. So the, the, the external uh, morphological characters give us four, and the seeds give us three. Uh, in particular, this is important. Here's Dr. Discolor, which is illustrated here. Certain species have a parunculo or ileosome, which is a food body rich in amino acids and sugars and distributed by ants. And as we can see here, the, from the Codex de la Trusco de la Manuscript, the first herbal of America, the association with ants are clearly stated. In fact, one of the synonyms in Nahuatl refers to the plant that grows on ant hills. Now, if you take a look at uh, isozymes, uh, which was part of our study of the uh, popular genetics of that tour of Mexico. We, again, we find that we can split the, the Dutra uh, uh, subgenus or section into two uh, distinct groups. You can see here one is in one branch, the other is in the other branch. So obviously the Dutra was an artificial uh, uh, classification. But we ended up with isozyme work on four sections. Uh, just recently, uh, we've published the uh, molecular phylogeny in this group, and uh, the important point here is that we've gone back to the three sections uh, within the genus. Uh, Bromansia used to be in Daptura, is clearly distinct uh, from the, the rest of the, uh, the, uh, the group here, this clad here in terms of Daptura. Uh, we have the, the Stramonium group here, the Daptura uh, subsection. We have the Serotonicolis, which is the aquatic species, uh, and then the Dutra is clearly uh, divided in subclads over here. The only thing is that we spent three years trying to see uh, what was going on here because one 
group, uh, Dutra jumped into the other group. And uh, this is what uh, reemphasizes Jan Salek's uh, comment yesterday, is that you have to take a look at your data and believe in it, because it, I really wasn't convinced, still not convinced, but <coughs> data don't mind. <laughs> if we map over the morphological characters here, uh, we can see in front that fruit positions and flowers are very important. We'll just look at fruits here for the case. We can see uh, in terms of the division of the, the sections, uh, uh, we have over here uh, our tree, and this is the Datura group here, one uh, Dutra group here, another Dutra group in this Rathapalus, the case of the Grantium. And we see the, the morphological curves really don't line up with the molecular data. You take a look at the uh, fruit position, uh, not at all. Even worse, we take a look at fruit types. But we take a look at seeds, and the seeds match up with three sections as we fought. So in the seed anatomy morphology, also three sections going back to the Bernhardt's classification. Now, this is, this is important because this has to do in part with sympatry and uh, reproductive isolation, which we'll get into today. But we're also interested in looking at uh, the distribution geographically. And we can see here that all 13 species are native to Mexico, half are endemic species. And there are two areas of concentration of species, uh, species diversity. One in the Rio Balsas Valley, and the other one in southwestern uh, Chihuahua and the Barranco region. Um, because of time, I see Don teaching at this clock here, we'll move on. Uh, uh, on to another team besides geography. Uh, here we're looking at the distribution related to uh, nine, the 21 different environmental factors with the ecological niche uh, model. Essentially what we find here uh, are those 21 longitude, uh, the precipitation of the driest quarter of the year, altitude, and the average temperature during the warmest quarter of the year best explain the distribution of these uh, species uh, throughout Mexico. So they're very particular. This in part may uh, explain why not all Datura species are weedy. The Datura stromonium is the weediest species. It, it's found throughout all these different uh, uh, geographical provinces, uh, but the endemic species are not. In terms of uh, the evidence of their use over time, we don't have time to get into everything. We'll just give a couple examples. One, uh, I think one of the more fascinating ones, includes uh, petroglyphs. Uh, in uh, basically California, Baja California, and Texas. And essentially, uh, the people would take uh, these plants under ceremonial conditions, and uh, being a deliriant, it would exaggerate uh, certain features such as size, the ability to move, uh, fly, and things of that sort. So we can see here the exaggeration of size, uh, we can see here the detura capsules, uh, and the reduction of the head, but extension of the arms. Here's the, the, the tour. I can't identify it yet. Can't get any DNA off the petroglyph. <laughs> but uh, one of the things also that's very important is that it, it associated with the, the uh, archaeological digs, there were is, is all these uh, the seeds were found as well, along with various ceremonial items. <coughs> uh, this is the case of the Rio Pecos in Texas. In the historical literature, we have quite a bit of documentation. In particular, the Sacobun, which is essentially our field guide to the plants at the time of the conquest, we have uh, the strong documentation of Datura as an anti-inflammatory uh, medicine, in particular Datura stermonium here. Here's Datura Yonoxia in the section dealing with the abuse of the uh, Datura. Of course, this was from the viewpoint of the Spaniards, not from the viewpoint of the, of the Aztecs. But here we can see essentially a, it was documented in terms of being a plant that made one drunk or mad. In terms of use of Datura in Mexico, as I said, we have 13 species. Uh, six species are registered uh, in a survey of, of almost 200 uh, references now. Uh, we find uh, 24 specifically talking about the use uh, over time of uh, Datura. Most of the common uses deal with medicinal aspects. The, the dominant application is for analgesic, anti-inflammatory anti uh, properties. In about half of those reports, the with Detrus stramonium, which is the worldwide weed today. We can see here, uh, in terms of the, the uh, pre preparation, basically just warm up the leaf, you put it uh, onto the, the area that's infected or the, that's inflamed, and also it's usually the leaf that is used. In terms of the chemical composition, well, all of us know it's full of uh, lots of nice propane alkaloids. Uh, we've been able to identify uh, 33 uh, alkaloids now in our studies of the various species in Mexico. 
But we're also interested in finding out what's the active principle in terms of its principal use as a medicinal plant. Uh, and after three master's degree students, we don't know still. Uh, we can see here in the summary, if we take a look at the complete abstract, here's our positive control here. Uh, it, with a complete as, at, uh, at extract, we get the, uh, the uh, uh, positive uh, control of the, in this case here, the analgesic uh, properties. Uh, but if we start fractioning out, in particular looking at alkaloid fraction, no activity whatsoever. We start taking out individual fractions here, and it loses its ability. So it appears to be a synergistic uh, component to the, uh, its use. In terms of uh, domestication, uh, there is one species uh, that's domesticated, that's sort of been hidden. Uh, it's a plant uh, with uh, double flowers, uh, it's lost the spines, uh, it's not as fuzzy, etc. And here we have in, in shop as one of the home altars where it's used uh, as a part of the ceremonial for it and home uh, religious activities. It's a plant that was early documented uh, in Europe as a domesticated plant. However, there are some studies now, uh, both by linguists and by uh, uh, an Indian uh, medical botanist who claims that this plant may have been introduced or present in the uh, Indian continent uh, a millennium ago. Uh, there's still a lot of controversy about that, but we're in the process of looking at that more carefully. Today, we can see that Tolawache is still used uh, in the, uh, the markets. Uh, it basically is an analgesic property, an anti-inflammatory property. It, it is illegal to sell that in Mexico, so that's why you often find it mixed up into all the greenery there. So you either have to have to know who your vendors are, or you have to have a sharp eye to pick it up. Uh, it is also a plant which is abused, depending on how you want to define that. Uh, on one hand, the women in Mexico go around into lochando, los hombres. They, they make the, the men go mad, so they don't go off with other women or whatever. Uh, that's why we have a strong group of only male, only investigators working on this problem. Uh, but it's also uh, become quite popular here is a, uh, is a recreational drug. And this is where there's been a lot of problems lately uh, in terms of clearing uh, kids wandering around, someone crossing the border and what, uh, what is in El Paso. It is called in Mexico, what is tea, for instance. And of course, a lot of the drug uh, the cartels are using this to, uh, to uh, drug this, this some of their, their, uh, their people. Uh, also, just as a highlight, although we're not into the Caribbean area, it is also known as zombie cucumber, which is we use for many zombies. Okay. In terms of the contemporary use, it is a ceremonial plant. It is used um, with a certain amount of restriction among different groups. Uh, this is just uh, one of the studies, one of my students here looking at its use among the Wisholis. Most of us know about the Wisholis with their bi directional migration, with peyote, and so forth. But it's in all uh, Mesoamerican uh, cultures. There's a yin and a yang. There's a, a, there are counterparts in the world. And the counterpart to uh, uh, the fofara, the peyote, is giri. This is solandra and the turin. And basically, it's a combination of the four elements of the world. Here's one of the we show uh, paintings here dealing with the uh, ex uh, that tour exhibit. But essentially, it, it is expressed as, as part of the fire. Uh, and on one hand, the people associated with hikuri are associated with purity, order, that's why they have their bi-directional migratory uh, uh, programs and so forth, programs of uh, migratory pilgrimages. And Kiri, basically associated with disorder, cowardliness, power, commerce. And these are the Wisholas that you see who emigrate from Jalisco and Nayarit to other parts of Mexico. So this is uh, uh, where you find the, uh, the association with, with, with cultural characteristics. E, and also in the circus sites uh, within the Wichol area, uh, the peyote are farmed within the ceremonial center, and the datura is planted around the outside of the ceremonial centers. In summary, Mexico is the home uh, to all species uh, of the genus. Uh, five species uh, are endemic. They don't go outside the boundaries. Uh, the morphological uh, isothyme uh, characters recognize four sections. Uh, however, the uh, DNA, the chloroplast DNA in particular, uh, shows that we have uh, three sections. And these do not correlate with the traditional conventional taxonomic uh, characters. The greatest species richness is uh, essentially in the Rio Balsas area, which is a very important area for uh, uh, domestication of plants in Mesoamerica. Uh, the ge geographic distribution is associated with latitude, humidity, and, and altitude. 
there is a continuity of use of uh, this plant. However, as in many cases, uh, it is something which is strictly controlled by the culture and very difficult for outsiders to become involved. The tropane alkaloids are very important in terms of the uh, producing the effects that we find associated with ceremony and toxicity. However, its medicinal applications uh, still elude us. We still need to work on that. And I'd uh, like to thank my collaborators and my students for part of their work and also the, the various uh, organizations that supported our studies. Thank you very much. There is time for a question or two. Anyone have a question for Bob? Yes, Mark. We have two distributions, one in uh, Southern California along the coast, we've got the desert. Is that part of Mega uh, Mexico or is that? Uh, yeah, yeah. That? we don't have the exact uh, uh, boundaries marked off on, on Mega Mexico, but we, it is included in Southern California. Uh, in fact, uh, the in all the literature, you talk about that Tura Metaloides, which now we recognize in the east as being Anoxia, in the west, and California being Rightia. And it appears that, uh, in fact, that name will probably be changing. You know, we taxonomists have to justify our jobs, so we go around changing names every once in a while to keep economic bonds on their toes. So, uh, yeah, yes, but that, that is uh, what we're finding, though, and this is one of our future studies, is that apparently the Datura right on the coast of California is different from the Altiplano in uh, Mexico and southwest United States. And so uh, and that's the reason I walk, we do the Red Canyon every year to collect samples. Okay. One other question? Yeah. Um, I apologize because this is sort of tangential, but your petroglyphs, um, I have been looking at petroglyphs around the world and, and, and been struck by how few plants are in petroglyphs. Mm -hmm. And you have one that is. What is the date on that petroglyph? That goes back to uh, Zapenko's River. I think it goes back to 800 uh, AD. Oh, relatively. Rel relatively recent, yeah. Okay. I'm sure Bob would be willing to answer questions later on if you find him, so Thank we'll you, move right along.